What's going on guys? I'm Jake the Lawn Kid. Welcome back to another weekend in the lawn. I don't know if you can tell, but behind me here, it's a little warm rainy day here in Northwest Indiana, which by the way is a good thing because these warmer temperatures and moisture will allow me to get out here and get some work done on the lawn. So stay tuned for those videos coming soon. Anyway, the reason I'm here today is because I want to talk to you guys all about sprayer calibration. Now, for those of you guys who've been following me for quite some time, remember I've done a couple videos in the past, and one of the things I've preached to you guys is that it's important to calibrate ourselves to the sprayer so that we can cover the lawn consistently in a certain amount of time. But today what I'm going to do a little bit differently is we're actually going to explore the other side. I'm actually going to show you guys how to calibrate the sprayer to yourself for a more comfortable, less time consuming means of application. So with all that being said, let's get into it. Alright, before we get into the video, I want to say a big thanks to two companies. First off, big thanks to Sprayers Plus for hooking me up with their top of the line backpack sprayer, the 105EX. Now, for those of you guys who are looking to purchase the 105EX or any of Sprayer Plus's sprayers, you can do so using my coupon code GOELECTRIC by clicking that first link in the description which will allow you free shipping on your purchase. Secondly, I want to say a big thank you to Gregson's Clark Spraying Equipment for hooking me up with their PBP nozzle which works on any battery powered launch sprayer. The nice thing about this spray tip is that it'll allow me to cover more area in less time. That's one of the things I want to accomplish today. Okay, so to be super honest with you guys, I'm a little new to the way this uh, sprayer tip works here. One of the things that confuses me is how you assemble it. If you guys would like to correct me in the comments, if I'm wrong, I'd really appreciate it, but I believe it goes like this. This smaller end here, this is clearly the front end of things, so this is where my spray nozzle is going to be, so I believe spray nozzle comes through here. It holds back here when you screw it in so it doesn't go anywhere. And then on the back here, I believe the filter goes in to stop any of the chunk that might come from spraying uh, from coming in here and plugging your sprayer tip. So I'm not sure if that's correct. Again, comment below if I'm wrong, but I believe that's how it works. Okay, now before we get into it, let's go over our constants and our variables because these will give us a better idea of what we're doing and why. So to start off, our constants, we have four different constants to think of height, width, speed, pressure. Let's go over height and width real quick because these two are connected no matter what you do. So the best way to explain this in layman's terms would be the height that you hold your sprayer is going to dictate the width of your spray pattern. So in this case, the closer you hold it to the ground, the smaller the width of your spray pattern, whereas the further you hold it from the ground the wider spray pattern that you have makes sense and then speed speed is very important no matter what speed you start at you want to make sure you commit to that the entire application to ensure that you get an even application the last thing you want to do is walk really fast or really slow on your first pass and get more product in some areas than others and then finish with an inconsistent application so remember when it comes to consistency speed is very important and then pressure that's another one that dictates the amount of product that comes out of our sprayer. Now keep in mind for today's video we're dealing with a battery powered sprayer so pressure isn't really something we have to worry about changing. It's always going to be the same no matter what. Now let's get on to our variable. The one variable we have to think about for all of this is going to be our spray tips. Spray tips are very important. In fact, the bigger the spray tip you use, the larger amount of volume is going to come out of your sprayer, right? So when it comes to selecting the right nozzle to use for your sprayer, again make sure it's a fan tip nozzle. We've talked about this a lot. That'll ensure us the most consistent coverage for our application, which in this case is a blanket spray. To be more specific, you want to make sure that the fan tip you're using matches the pressure of your sprayer. What I have here are a couple illustrations, and I'm actually going to have some visual aid in here too that I took out in the garage. And the first one is going to be what happens when you use too small of a tip on a high pressured sprayer. When you do that, you're more likely to have a little bit of a misting action in your spray. That could actually make you more susceptible to drift on windy days because your nozzle isn't big enough to handle that much water so that's something to keep in mind. As far as selecting the right tip you want to make sure that you select the biggest one if not bigger to ensure that you have more volume of water coming out which will lead to less mist and less drift. Okay, 
so now that we know what we're looking for, now it's time to walk the line. What I'm going to do is I'm going to walk a line at my natural speed and in addition keeping my constants in mind, my height and my width. In this case I'm going to be holding the nozzle at knee height and I am going to just walk the line and at my natural speed and see how long it takes me to cover that area. So with all that being said, let's get into it. Okay, so what I got here is I got a little tape measure laid out to measure about 10, 15 feet here. I'm only going to spray 10 feet to keep my math simple. Uh, to see what I'm talking about, just keep watching the video and it'll all make sense. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and walk 10 feet at my natural walking speed. Again, keeping height and width in mind, keeping it at the same height, and then see how much I get out in that amount of time. We'll do a bucket test and then we'll do some math and then figure out how much we're putting out per thousand square feet. <laughs> Four seconds to spray 10 feet. Come from about here to here. So okay, seven. so what I came up here with for my length was 20 feet and my width 5 feet. Now, as you saw in the garage, I only had 10 feet to play with, but to make my math easier, I went ahead and multiplied by 2 and said 20. Now, Another change I made was in my width. Originally my width was 7 feet as you heard in the garage, but to make my math easy I decided to adjust my calibration, lower my spray nozzle a little bit so that I can take away 2 feet and have 5 once again to make the math a lot easier. So now what we're going to do is just simple math. We're going to multiply our length times our width and that will give us our square footage. So in one pass I can cover 100 square feet when I'm dealing with 20 feet of length and 5 foot of width. Okay, so real quick I wanted to pause here and give you guys a little bit of context to what's going on. As you've seen in the edit, I've already walked the line and I got 5 by 10, so 50 square feet, but to make my math easier, I multiplied by 2. So now the next thing I need to do is figure out how many ounces of product, in this case water, did I get out in those 8 seconds. So in order to figure that out, I'm going to have to do a bucket test. And another thing I'm going to do while I'm doing the bucket test is I'm actually going to show you guys a side-by-side -side comparison from the small spray tip I had all the way to the largest to show you guys that when it comes to choosing a tip it makes all the difference took us eight ounces of product to do that. So now that we got all of our math in line, now we need to go ahead and get things into thousand square foot increments, which we're used to talking about. So the way we do that is we just have to multiply to a thousand. So that's why I said hundred, make it easier. Multiply by 10, thousand square feet, 80 ounces of water. Now what I need to do here is I need to take the amount of ounces I pumped out and divide by 120, 128 ounces are in a gallon and then I get my total gallons of output per thousand square feet. I may have been walking a little too fast so I might want to slow down just a little bit to ensure that I get out a gallon or more of product. I know I made a point in this video that the whole point was to calibrate the sprayer to me, but when I said that I might want to slow down a little bit to get to one gallon, that's just me, you know, making a correction because as we say all the time, it's not so much gallons per minute, it's more gallons per thousand. And because I'm a little under that, I know that as an applicator, I need to slow down my speed to incorporate that one gallon of mix onto my thousand square foot area so that I get the results that I want. So I wanted to make sure that I wasn't confusing anybody there with the fact that I took that mental note there that I need to slow down my walking speed in order to incorporate that one gallon of water. With that, I hope you guys learned something from today's video. I know I got really technical with the math and stuff. Sometimes it's really fun to do that and it's also necessary as it helps us to think strategically like a general on the battlefield. So with that, I'm Jake the Long Kid. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time. If I don't see you guys next time, you're going to be dominated. See you later.